Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today on this exciting edition of Public Domania, I believe this is volume 7, we are going to be talking about Wormtris and Mega Ball. Yeah. Two titles, just by their name alone. Solicit, you know their goal. Yeah. <laughs> solicit certain emotions. <laughs> yes, they do. But I, I did get very emotional this week, I'm not going to lie. I brought my hanky. <laughs> but, Aaron, I want to bring you back. I want to I enter the time machine with you, going way, way back in time. And All I right. want you to tell me about your first experience with public domain software. Public domain, so the first experience in mm-hmm. public domain software. Gosh, gee, many Christmas. Well, it would have had to have been way back. Um, probably the very first couple times I got on to bullet boards. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bullet board I got on the first time, uh, I'll never forget it, West, West Virginia Net, WV Net. That was a BBS. It was a local BBS. And it was, I don't know, it was some kind of educational thing, but I was just so happy to be online. I was like, oh boy, and there were files. You could yeah, get files. Yeah. And uh, you could get files. And I was surfing the net on the uh, on the Coco, ironically. And uh, they had some small, basic programs you could download that were uh, someone had put together to, you know, do, I mean, it was real pedestrian stuff. So you, you were stuff. doing this surfing on a PC looking for Coco games? No, I was on a Coco. You were on for, a Coco. Yeah. This was public domain, Coco public domain I stuff. I see. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, as, and you could just get little programs that would do, like, I remember just downloading anything I could because I didn't know what downloading was. And so I, I remember getting something to uh, organize a cookbook. That's probably the first thing I ever got. Really? Some kind of cookbook thing. I didn't want it. I played a cookbook game on the Spectrum. Well, this was ago. not a game. Although well, I tried to make it a game, but it's not. But you asked my very first introduction to public domain, that's what it was, randomly grabbing things because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Now, my first introduction to a proper public domain game would probably be a text game. It would also would be on the Coco. Uh, and I remember playing some text games that I would download that were that were public domain. And the only reason I say they're public domain because a lot of times you just get stuff that were just unlabeled, something that's probably put up there. Right. Uh, but these would come up and say, hey, you can send, uh, if you like this, you can send a couple of bucks and here's an address. And then that, I, so, you know, there you go. Uh, but uh, when I, public domain to me took off mostly when I was on the PC. And really, I mean, public domain had been around for a long time. But uh, uh, the stuff I remember the, where it really took off. Uh, was uh, you know I hate to say this because but I mean it's, it was that sort of apogee era where because really when I, public domain to, to me was synonymous with crap <laughs> I just didn't think it was very good mm-hmm. it was public domain so in yeah. essence it was it's like public television it's like oh, that's crap and now it's not a fa- <laughs> is that a fair thing to say it's not but it's true you're getting it for free they're not making you pay for it so how good could it be yeah. you know you know I think the, uh, maybe a more apt comparison would be something like local access TV uh, well I, it doesn't same. You know, you're right, but it's free. My mm-hmm. point is, it was free. If it was any good, they'd make you pay for it. Yeah, you know? yeah. No one's pirating public domain. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but uh, uh, hey, public domain came around a big way. And uh, on the Amiga, I was in the Software of the Month Club, and every month I got discs and discs full of public domain stuff. And I used to love getting those discs. I'd play all the public domain stuff. It was fun. There was a lot of good stuff in there. I, I, the Amiga public domain sector was pretty solid. Uh, to me, I thought you know I, I I was a member of the the uh, software uh, software disc of the month club for years, and built up a huge collection of them, and they were good stuff on there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, overall, since I was a dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy pirate boy, I just pirated stuff I wanted. So public domain, it wasn't that big. You kind of leapfrogged the public domain. You went right for the yeah. commercial. Yeah, I mean, it, with the exception titles. of your dooms and your. And that sort of thing, because Doom was a big, you know, of course, that so was you shareware. So you don't see any difference between public domain and shareware? Well, I mean, can you get them for free right now? If the answer is yes, that's, I put them in the same kind of box. Now, mm-hmm. public domain, you don't have to pay for it. Shareware, you're supposed to pay for it to either register it or to make it whole, you know. So there's a, there's the difference there. And I, 
and I've seen people debate this, and they could get into real intricacies. I'm not going to do that, yeah. and I don't know if you want to. But well, that sounds great, but I think well, I mean, there people do take a, make a big deal out of it. But to, to me, if you're shareware, you pay them to get more, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to just getting the demo that you got. But Doom was a big Doom was a pretty big deal when it came out for shareware. I think it really. Uh, 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 took that to the next level. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. people are like, crap, you can get this right now and you can play it for free and you can well, get it, more if you, you pay know, for it. It coincided with the internet as well. You know, yeah. It's, they, they went hand in hand. People could download something that wasn't on a BBS. Yeah, because really the BBS setup was not conducive to, to a model that you could sell your game like that. I mean, um, you could order... It's a, it, it's sort of like ordering games on the back of the magazine, except let's say it's a step, maybe three steps down from that. I mean, mm -hmm. so you're looking way down there. So yeah, until the majority of the country had access to an online common area, it, you you really couldn't do a business model on BBSs. I'm sure somebody tried, but yeah. There you go. What about you? What about your what's your public domain pass? Um, uh, public domain always seemed really sketchy to me, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Because in the back, Sketchy. in the back of Antic Magazine, there will be all these ads for public domain, and they always said "Triple X Public Domain Games, Adults Only," and then there was a little address you could send your money to. Yeah. And so I've always associated public domain games with working a little blue. Now, of course, I know that's not the case since we've started this yeah, show. That's w you mean you didn't but up to the point where we'd started doing these? You thought public domain games had nudity? And I thought sex it, in I them? thought it was nothing but filth. But you knew about Doom and stuff, That's didn't you? That's shareware. But I mean, so you, for you, there was a stark contrast between the two. Oh, yeah, because public domain was the stuff that was nasty, and shareware was the stuff that was Doom and really So you were Doom. out of your mind, is what you're saying. I'm just saying I had, because, I had different views. Yeah, wrong ones. Yes. Public domain has very little to do with... Most, most porn is not public domain. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. But if you were a kid, and the only time you ever saw the words <laughs> public domain was when they were flanked by the letters XXX, you would form that opinion. Remember, I wasn't in the scene like you were. Well... I was I was on an island by myself with me and the Atari twelve hundred XL. There was no one else to guide. I will me. say I will give you this: if you're looking, if you're getting the majority of your uh, knowledge about public domain and shareware and stuff from the back of magazines, it gets a little wacky back there. You yeah. know, you know wrestling. I used to read wrestling magazines. It was the same thing. Some people want to order a wrestling tape, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a uh, wrestling eye magazine, one of the ones that had back ads in them. Well, you could order those, but mixed in with those was apartment wrestling and cat fighting and stuff yeah. like that. So you're like, wait it's a minute sort of, here. Sort of code. Am I going to get yeah. Dusty Rhodes versus Ric Flair? Am I going to get Hyena Girl taking on Panther Lady right. in, the, in some guy's uh, bedroom? Yeah. You know, I, you know, because and, and maybe you want to see them, but maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you just want to see the American Dream. That's exactly. Yeah. So I can. I'm going to give. I'm going to give you a pass. Well, thank you. Right, I you're appreciate welcome, that. Man. Aaron, what's been going on this week over at everythingamiga.com? Well, the DK Master put up another one. In fact, you just we just missed it press time last week. So, believe it or not, it's Ripley is the title of this week's offering. And he goes into a, a little film series called Alien. Now, both we don't agree on much film-wise, but I think we can both agree that we've that you I know you've never seen any of the Alien movies, no, have you? No. And I've only seen the third one, which I've been told is garbage. I hear the ones to start with are the Alien vs. Predator movies that recently <laughs> came out. Well, I have played the uh, Capcom game of that, and I've also played the uh, Jaguar game of that, but otherwise, no. You know, I'm not a big uh, uh, fan of space horror, you know? And, it, and it's funny. You like your horror to be more terrestrial? Well, here's the funny thing about it. I think in this uh, area, me and you are very close. There's something very unsettling to me about space horror. I don't know why. I don't know what it is that it creeps me out. And the whole uh, th alien coming out of the gut, that yeah, weird, that I don't, I'm not into that. Or the alien pops its mouth open, there's a little alien in the mm -hmm. mouth that's like a tongue. What little, is that? Little alien tongue. I mean, how does that thing even function in the real world? <laughs> What's the little alien? How's he feeling in there? Probably that's, not so good. That's true. No that's wonder true. he's mad. Nobody wants... It's sort of like being the donkey, the end of the donkey when you're in a two-person yeah. donkey costume. Something else. I, it, I mean, I, this is no offense to her, but I'm, there at the, I'm not the biggest Sigourney Weaver fan. Was she in any other films? Yeah, Ghostbusters. Who did she play? She was the chick in Ghostbusters. She was the girl that they came to help out. Oh, she wasn't the answer the phone lady. 
Janine or no, whatever? No, no, I might be thinking about the cartoon. Well, I mean, no. Do you, have you seen the film Ghostbusters? Yeah, I mean, okay. I think. Do you remember the girl who went home and she opened a fridge and there was a separate world in, inside the fridge? Yeah. She's that's the, her. She's Bill Murray's love interest. That's right. Okay, yes. That's, I know that's her. About. I didn't realize that was the same person. And she's done a zillion things, but those are the, th- the things that leap to mind. Mm. You know, and, but I mean, and I don't hate her. I just, I'm, I'm not a huge fan. So between weird alien horror and, and like, we're watching. Like, look at that. I don't want to see that. We're watching pictures go by and there's a guy, bug eyed guy with crap come out of his face. Nope. I don't need that. Nope. Who's, who likes that? No. Not me. You know, I think the thing about space horror that is attractive to people that enjoy horror films is you have the added uh, tension of a claustrophobic environment. You can't run away when mm-hmm. you're in space. You know, you're stuck on the station. You know, he's he's intermingling Aliens 3, the movie, with the game. Now, we actually did Aliens 3 a long time mm-hmm. ago, and it was okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember hating it. I no, remember it's like, it's not like, a bad game. Uh, but uh, uh, I haven't, I get, I saw it, and I just think it was that good either but then everybody tells me it's horrible so there, there you go i believe isn't alien famous for uh conceptualizing the first space marine isn't that the first time that word Dude, was you used? got me I, I know everybody says it's giger-esque i think giger i don't know who was like he was officially involved or unofficially involved mm-hmm. in it or geiger if you're uh, us from us, five years yeah. ago hey I, you know, what are you gonna do uh it's like that i've heard people you know tape mode where you turn the tv sideways Pronounce it Tate. 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 I never pronounce it like that. It may no. be the way you're it's supposed Tate, to pronounce like it. Little man Tate. That's where Tate it's based sounds on. kind of snooty. Yeah. You know, but nobody, there you go. Nobody wants a two syllable word where one will do. No. Anyway, if you want a uh, old school Dreamcatcher movie video game double trouble article, go for it. That's, really, that's the one, huh? Yeah. And Alien 3, like I said, uh, uh, not, uh, not, I mean, Dreamcatcher covers a lot of movies that have hideous games based on them. This is sort of like a not a very good movie that has a, a, an adequate game. So yeah. you got that going for you. All right, Aaron. It's time to talk about what's been going on this week in... I'm not going to say it. Oh, you know man. I don't because know Because there's a sound that I hear. It's coming up over the hill. Coming down the track. It's the gamble train. Oh, no. It's back, Aaron. You <laughs> thought it was gone. Yeah. I love that it was gone. It's well, it's back. Doesn't make any sense. Action. Look that, at it. That, it's rolling down the track. That is horrific. And it's chock full of Amiga news. <laughs> it's brimming. That is a horrific. There is Amiga right there. news seeping through the undercarriage of the game. See, train. this is like another Aliens film right here. <laughs> <laughs> Our stuff gonna come out of the wall and stab me in my face as my eyes bug out. Is that what's coming? Boy, I hope not. At me least too. not until after I leave. Aaron, this weekend, this week, Amiga Rama. <laughs> Our boy, Lore Farius. I was saying his name wrong, by the way. There's an R in there. It's not Lo Farius. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware. Did you notice it's a, that? It's a solid R. Did you choose not to correct me? That's, I, 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 listen, you have to wallow in your own crap once, my friend. Well, uh, he is talking about Altered Beast. I listened to this, actually, because now, I I, uh, I knew you were going to bring this up due to your jerkery. <laughs> right? Altered Beast has its own storied history here on the Amigos podcast. Yeah, and uh, I knew I knew when I saw it. In fact, I left a message to Loaf. I said, listen, you're in for it, pal, you know, and because I knew how hideously bad this was. And I knew you weren't going to let this go by without bringing that up again. So go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead and make yourself feel good. So at the beginning of the show, Aaron just, he, five or six times, he's like, man, I can't wait to talk about Altered Beast. He said this on the show. That's not true. Not five or six times. He was like, you want to talk about an arcade perfect conversion? No, I never said Look that either. Altered Beast. This is all, that. Nah, you're rewriting history here. And we've played Altered Beast. It was horrible. And it was horrible. It was horrible. I was mistaking it with, the, uh, with I don't know what. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, I, I, I played a lot of the, the uh, Mega Drive Altered Beast, and I thought it was good. I like Altered Beast. I played the crap in it, but the Amiga version is an Outrun-esque effort. It's a one to in skip. In hideousness. It's a one to skip. But what's not to skip is the Amiga Rama podcast. Yeah, if you're not listening, you should be. And I will say this. Lafarius talks about how much he loves this game. So... This had to be extra brutal for him yeah. for getting a crap version. Or maybe he loves the Amiga version. No, he does he not. Doesn't. I'm going to oh, spoil okay. the show right now. Um, it's He hates it, um, and he's right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up, Bo. Oh, you're way. welcome. Oh, I'll, you're I'll be sure to bring it up several more times yeah. throughout the course of our yeah. run here. Uh, next up, Aaron, our boy Ravi. In 21 hours, this, <laughs> thing, what is, this, this, this thing is closing in. He's over. Now, how would you pronounce this, Aaron? This this place here. Uh, uh, Leicestershire. Oh, you're so close. 
It's just like Lester, like Lester the Unlikely. Okay. He's going to be at the Lester Retro Museum. This is at the home of several of our uh, compatriots. Um, I know that Chris Folds hails from Lester, and uh, there's another guy too uh, that is uh, in the Discord that's from Lester. And so um, if you are in the area, uh, come on out and see Ravi do his famous Amiga DJ set where he's got two 1200s. He's got the little screens. He's got some kind of weird box. Yeah. Look at all the knobs on that box. We mentioned that last week. It's it looked now from this angle, it's even more. It's like something you put out of, of like a of a plane, mm -hmm. like a like a jumbo jet. He just took that crap, and rewired it up. Who knows what he's got going on there? Yeah, absolutely. So. I've seen his act. I I endorse. This is gonna be a good. This is gonna be a good show. He should add some dance moves in there. Who knows? Maybe he does. Maybe maybe he he mixes it up, especially when he's live. He's not in his room, but he's out and about. Yeah. Um, oh, you're right. Probably in his room dance and make you look like an idiot. Yeah, I never do that. Wow. Um, Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast this week, Aaron. I watched this one too. This is another review, another viewpoint, as it were, of the Checkmate Amiga 1500 case. Uh, we saw the wonderful Retro Man Cave review of it, and uh, but it never hurts to get a second <laughs> opinion. And uh, Doug over at Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast puts this thing through its paces. Uh, and uh, I think he ends up installing a, just a normal 500 in there, isn't that right? I believe so. I, I, you know, I have to say I've watched several of these case setups. And I, this was I thought this was really good. Of course, uh, uh, Ten Mark he knows what he's doing. Uh, and it's funny I, now that I've seen. I think I've seen Neil uh, from Retro Man Cave put one of these things together, and I think Pixel Vixen put one together. And now we've seen Ten Mark do it. And between the three of them, I've got a real good idea of what these things look like inside. <laughs> Tidmark shows off the different face plates, different back cases, I should say, plates for it. This is a very thought, well thought out uh, gimmick. I will say it's a very impressive. Do you does this make you um, more or less uh, envious of having one of these since you started watching all these unboxing and putting together videos? Oh, wait a second, hi Neil. Uh, now say that one more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> does this make you more or less? Uh, Wanting to have, I'm I'm searching for the right word. Envious of owning one of these things. Now that you've seen this, envious thing. of owning yeah. it. Like I'm gonna go steal one. Uh, I'll, here's my only issue with this, right? So get this, because I was thinking about this. I was watching it. These are awesome new cases. <coughs> I think if I was going to get one of these new uh, vampire boards or one of those uh, Amiga 500 double plus, like do it yourself. We saw. Neil put all the caps and crap on there, one of those. This will be perfect uh, because it's all new, fresh thing. When you transplant one of, if I have a 500 and I, I want to transplant it here to get that, to get those slots, I could see that. But it, I don't, I don't know if I would actually take one of the, my old Amigas, like say my 1200, and stick it in this. I've, I've had second thoughts about it, and because. I don't. Maybe it's because I've got the Amiga 1000 now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be part of it. And so you have a, you I'm have a pizza box style I've Amiga. I've been satiated yeah. for that kind of uh, setup. Uh, so I don't know if I would do it now. I think what I would rather do is take a fresh Amiga, uh, hot off the presses, mm -hmm. stick it in this thing, and then uh, get a, a get a proper keyboard or a USB keyboard or whatever you can do, and then uh, and to go that route, I will say I don't. And, and this is nothing against the setup. But the, the fact that he's made a gimmick to have that make that a key, external keyboard is amazing, but the keyboard is ugly. Yeah. It's, it's nothing you could do about it. I yeah. mean, he, that's the best you could do. It's a big, weird, blocky. I mean, you could beat a man to death with it. It's mm. all steel, you know. But it's not attractive. Uh, and I think I would rather have a fresh keyboard, a fresh everything. I think that's what I'd like to have. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Uh, I would not take a 500 apart, a working 500 apart to build one of these things because part of the appeal to me about the 500 is it's all in one design. But if I had a spare board of some sort, whether it was a new one or an old one or whatever, and then I could get, but I wouldn't use that keyboard. I mean, I agree with you. That keyboard is just... It's I mean, not attractive. If you've got the 1000, for example, mm -hmm. that keyboard is, is sort of slight. It fits yeah. perfectly underneath it. And, then you can, and there are lifts, in, and this is something else that Tenmark goes into. There are lifts that you can put under this thing that will make this dock just like the uh, 1000s mm -hmm. does. And I mean, it's fully, it's a functional gimmick. Sure. But I mean, if I'm going to spend the money to get this super fancy case, and I'm going to spend the money to, uh, to get whatever I put in it, I probably am going to 
put a new keyboard with it. Yeah. Because something that looks fresh and is uh, that is as bulky looking. I that sounds sort of vain, I guess. I mean, I, listen, I'm all about functionality. This is, but this is this is the exact same talk that we had about the vampire. Like you 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 spend all this money on this thing, and you want it to look a certain way. You want it to look like when you look down, you want to think to yourself, boy, that's a nice looking thing. Well, yeah. And I, I think this paired with that new vampire, if if that's your bag, mm-hmm. we're not here to judge. And it would be it sort of would be my bag if I had a ca- if I had this case, it showed up tomorrow, bam. Mm-hmm. What and then somebody was like, Hey, there's a there's a roving vampire standalone guy next door. Mm-hmm. And I went down and threw my money down and I've got this and I would then I would be on to something. Sure. You put it in there you uh, you get your USB keyboard and it can look really swank. You've got all that extra space to mess around with. You won't really need it, but it's there. Then you you know then you got something. I don't know now, but I mean still, this is a boon for Amiga 500 owners that want a, a real easy way to upgrade to a point where they can get like card support and have a slot. Mm-hmm. Like I will admit that one of the since my collection of Amigas is a, a, the 600s, the 1200s, the 500s, uh, the, or the 32x. I've got no expansion port, you know, no uh, card slots. Because I, I was thinking how neat it would be to have a uh, a PC uh, a PC card to put in one of these things to play with. Or I even read about uh, bridge boards that would do stuff like play, let you do C64 stuff. That would be fun to have cards and look for them, give you something to hunt for over sure. the years. But that's not really an option. I mean, they do they make cards that you can put in with the that for like PC compatibility that goes into your uh, at that 1,000 or, or 1,200, they do. But I mean, it cards like this would be a lot easier. Plus, you could also put in like PC video card or whatever you want. It gives you options that you don't have otherwise. So I could see that aspect of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I just wonder by the time, if you're starting from scratch, if you buy the 500 and you buy the Checkmate case, at what point does it just make sense to just buy a 2,000? You know, and then well, you've got or, everything right off the Or bat. maybe just buy one of the new Amigas that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you, maybe that we can say, well, they're so, they're so I, I, you expensive. Know, it, it's just like everything. If, you, if you're if you in a specific use case, then this thing is for you. And if not, maybe it's not. But I mean, it's one thing about it, it is brilliant, though. The case, it's compatible with so many different things. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could put it, you know, like, I think it's like a, min, a mini ATX. Uh, a motherboard in there. Like a PC yeah. board in there. Yeah. And it would be beautiful for mm-hmm. that. I mean, there. The, uh, the amount of design that went into this is astounding. It is. It's it is. astounding. So I had thumbs up to that and thumbs up to Ten Mark. We did a great job on this. Yeah, yeah. Very descriptive, too. All right, Aaron. Next, The next car down on the gamble train, there is a new uh, vintage computer gathering that's going on. This is the SoCal Vintage Computer Gaming Group at Lost Levels Arcade. Ooh, this this cool thing name. Is, is guaranteed to have some Amiga presence here. This is October 5th. Uh, over in Claremont, California. If you're in the area and you are looking for something to do before Amy West, uh, this <laughs> is something that's coming up. Oh, it actually, it's its already happened. Well, how was it? It was fantastic. That's <laughs> all about it. I could have sworn that this was coming up soon, but I guess that it's already happened. So never mind. <laughs> but you can check out if there's any pictures. I'm or sure they'll have one next month. Yeah, I was going to say, this is <laughs> this is another another uh, group that I came across that, that has Amiga action going on. Uh, they've got a Facebook page. If you want to sign up, you know, and, and like their page, you can keep track of what's new and what's coming up with these guys, the SoCal Vintage Computer Gaming. Group. I will say, I'm glad you brought this up just for the the Facebook cover photo. Yeah, of these kids to try to explain this. You've never seen children so stunned and amazed. <laughs> the kid in the blue sweater, it's like he is. He has touched the face of God. I mean, this kid is astounded. I don't know what they're playing. Can you see what that game is on the screen? No. It must be the most awesome game of all the time. (laughs) I want to do whatever it is they're doing to be that excited. I don't care what it is. It's all the time. I want to be like that. Something tells me they've got a heated game of worm tris going on. (laughs) That's exactly what it is. That was exactly my reaction when I fired that thing up. Okay, I found this next story on the old uh, Amiga Facebook group. You were really trolling around this week. Yeah, man. It was PD week. No. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is a guy. Look at these labels. Okay, this guy has printed custom I did see labels. Something about yeah, those are nice, for, aren't they? Yeah, and, and the, the, this led to a discussion on the on the, on the Facebook group about uh, do you like running your games from disk? And this in this day and age where we have WHD, we've got the GoTech. 
is there still a place for loading games off you know the old three and a half inch discs? Uh, this guy, I guess oh. he, uh, he he had a buddy that with a real professional printer. So these things, I mean, they look like they roll. Most Amiga games do not have disc labels that look this good. This is that's a, true. Yeah, no, yeah. none of them do. Yeah, those look like those are great. Yeah. What do so, you think about the disc question? Well, you pose there? I think it's interesting because. On the one hand, there is something to be said for instant action, especially when you're pressed from time. Oh yeah, um, I love and, some instant action. Yeah. Uh, however, there is also something to be said for the ritual, as it were. This is the same sort of thing that when I used to collect records, I used to like. I like going over to the shelf, <laughs> pulling something off the shelf, opening it up, sliding it in, or putting a record on a turntable. It's the same sort of thing. Popping that disc in the Amiga, hearing the grinding sound of the drive, Hoping to God it'll load That's and you haven't that. wasted and your time. There it is. Um, you know, I can see both sides. Is this? Do I want to have a big collection of uh, of floppies? No. You tried to force that upon me years ago, and I denied it. But stupidly, if you uh, if you have access to a printer and you can print off these sweet sweet labels, I mean, they do look really good. Yeah, for those list things, these are just like they look like they. What he's done is taken the actual box covers or box mm. art and just and then made labels and he's customized them so that the they're they're in they're uh they basically look like part of a, a set right you know you've got, a, you've got a stripe down the side the uh the the ob strip it looks ink a, heavy yeah. it's the only thing i'd worry about is these things popping right off if, uh, uh when you put them in right but i mean i don't i'm guessing these discs aren't the kind you actually put in the computer i think these are for display so that, I think that answers purposes. my question for me because here's the thing you know it's funny i put a picture up on on facebook and in this one this week I went out. I was I was amassing a, an Amiga fighting force of extraordinary magnitude, and I and I took all my disc drives and stacked them into one big stack. I got a five and a quarter inch, and I've got three three and a half inches of different sizes. Mm -hmm. right? So it's a big massive floppy tower of certain right. depth, right? And I looked at these drives and all their majesty, and it occurred to me that I hadn't had any of these hooked up for years. <laughs> and it was good. I smiled because using discs is a step up from uh, tape, but still. The, the moment where you try to load something for a few minutes and then he goes, eh, 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 and makes that noise, the noise of certain death, yep. you're boned. You know it's On over. tapes, you don't even get that. It just goes, bruh, 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 and you hear a click and it says IO failure, whatever it says, mm -hmm. then you're boned, right? right? I don't like those. I don't got time to sit around for uh, five minutes waiting for something to load. And then it, hey, look at bar games. Perfect example, right in the middle of my, of my cool review, bam, disc three failure, screwed. That's why the GoTech is gold, right? And the uh, the WHD loads are gold. I love them. Or the SD solutions are gold. Uh, I'm not saying never use discs, and I have to admit I do uh, like to hear the sound of the thing loading. It's one of the things I like about the GoTech, and certain like I've got a soft spot for the way Atari discs load. They sound really. I just like there's, that there's, noise. There's a, da, 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 yeah, da. it sounds and, like and, Mars, the bringer of war. Yeah, and and uh, so uh, there's a beepy. It's beepy. Yeah, it's and beepy. The, also the Amiga is more grindy, mm -hmm. and the PC is somewhere more like uh, staccato grinding. Mm -hmm. You know, so each one has their it's own an thing. Espresso grind. So sometimes right. it's fun, but it's not. Some I would not want to go back to tapes, floppies in, in any way. So right there, you go. Yeah. All right, Aaron, the next story on this week's Gamble Train special. Yeah. We're back looking at our buddies Amiga Bill and Guru Anthony. They had the uh, creator of the new Rygar for the Amiga, the, the now in production Rygar. Actually, I guess it's already finished because... It's out. This thing, yeah, they've made boxes. Uh, I know that, uh, I think that Neil, who's with us in the chat right now, uh, aka Indie Retro News, uh, was one of the recipients of one of only 10 boxed copies that oh will my. ever be made. Of he this should game. be, because that's the first place I heard of this and almost every other thing that we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? What do you think about um, artificially constraining production of well, boxed I believe, software? Well, I believe, first of all, that he's, this is a, you can go download this for free. Right. So, there's that. Also, as it was pointed out in uh, Discord, and, I, and of course, since you took great pleasure in hounding me about my Altered Beast failure. This is only for AGA machines, my friend. Mm -hmm. It took AGA to, to make this happen. So remember that next time you're bad mouth and the elite chipset that was AGA. Oh, remember that. Look, Bill was bringing fancy water right there. Oh, man. You, We're one in the same. You and Bill, are, Bill. You guys are both fancy boys. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I don't think it's bad in this case because... The, he may, I think these are more like honorary copies. I, I doubt he's. I doubt uh, this fellow is charging 
two grand a hit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you listen to, uh, uh, if you, you know about modern software, a lot of it doesn't come in a box set. And so what they're doing is there's a company that goes out and generates box uh, disc versions of, of get modern games, like for the Switch and stuff. And they purposely, artificially, they pre usually pre-sell out everything they've got. And so all their prices are ridiculous. It's, yeah. in, it, it's stupidly insane. And then the, on insane. the secondary market, they're up too. Right. And so... Uh, I don't think that's what's happening here. I don't know what the I don't know what's going on with the boss company. Only ten, but it sounds like when you limit it to ten, you know, unless he's making first of all, he's giving out his game for nothing. He's been working. We know he's been working on this for years. Yeah. So I'm guessing the, the, the giving out the game was just as a a nod and a wink to his buddies or helped mm -hmm. them out or whatever. I don't have any problem with it because he's giving away a, a game that he look, they obviously spent a ton of time on it. It looks outstanding. Good I mean, point. it looks really good. good, point. good so point. thumbs up by the way for. I mean, we always talk about, well, can the Amiga get some love in the, uh, uh, with some uh, homemade new stuff? And I mean, we, we've been getting it we've worthy been, yeah. and this, that uh, that uh, 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 Streets of Rage clone mm -hmm. that's coming out and, mm -hmm. you know, some other great stuff that we've talked about. So now we're finally getting it, getting the, the floodgates are opening, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, up next, Aaron, this is something that greatly excited me. Oh, I know about this. Our buddy Retro Man Cave, he is giving back. He gives back all the time. He does. Uh, he is giving back to the community by producing a new uh, calendar for 2020. And uh, look what's on the cover of that calendar. That is that a, could be straight from my house right there. It looks just like the. I've got that monitor. I've got the Amiga 1000, and I've got that disc drive right there. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this uh, calendar is all for charity. It benefits the Bluebell Wood Children's Hospice. A, a, a noble cause for sure. Uh, Retro Man Cave solicited uh, photos from uh, anyone that would like to, to uh, contribute a photo. And I was on the cusp of submitting one until I had the good fortune of looking at some of the other ones that were submitted, and then yeah. I just turned the camera off. What are you? You've got a nice things, camera. Well, the, you can have a nice camera, but you got to have the skill to go with it. What? <laughs> these guys really did a great job. I wish that there were some more pictures of the... Oh, uh, look the, at that. Yeah, what is that? That that looks like a cool little dude. Oh, it's, it's the brain. brain. Okay. You know what that is? I've heard of it. Okay. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I've never seen one of those. Yeah. So uh, if you are uh, in need of a calendar for 2020, I highly encourage you to go on over to uh, Etsy and just search for Retro Man Cave, <laughs> and uh, it should pop right up. It's also in our show notes, which is on a link on the podcast. Uh, I should start putting the show notes on a link in the YouTube video, too. That would probably be smart. Hmm. Moving good on. luck, Retro. That's a good. Oh, we love the charities. That's great. There's uh, Rygar is not the only new game in town, Aaron. All right. Well, this is not really a new game, so I guess Rygar really is the only new game in town. And Rygar's not new either. <laughs> Keep going. Gold Keep digging. Rush, Aaron. Yeah. This is uh, there's a new company out there, Sunlight Games. All right. That are uh, kicking off their new label with reissuing. Uh, classic Amiga games in boxed form. All right. Okay. Oh, look at that. Buddy. So this is this is a oh, this is hashtag bring back the feelies. Okay? Yeah. I'm yeah. for that. This is uh this is a game that I'd never heard of. Have you ever heard of this game? Gold, Gold Rush? Rush? Uh doesn't ring a bell. I guess, is it an old Sierra game? Yeah, it's a Sierra game. Oh, okay. I, well, maybe never, I have heard of I've it. I've never played this before, but it comes with the you know the full oh, color map, and uh, it looks like a stock certificate of some kind, you know, because it's the Gold Rush and everything. It's got stickers and crap yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. This looks good. This and looks like this reminds me of the uh, Defender of the Crown. Exactly. Hopefully, these guys will be a little bit faster on the old oh, delivering of the product. Pre-order. Oh, yeah. oh boy. So uh, this is currently you can pre-order it for twenty four ninety nine euro. Is that for the box? That's for the box. Well, that's not bad. No, it's very reasonable. Very reasonable. Now, I wonder, that comes it, with the discs and everything. You may not know this boat because I know you're not the guy. So, but, I mean, is this like, how's this, is this like a Sierra good to go with this or whoever owns their property? My or? guess is that they consulted them. If they didn't, that would have been quite the oversight. Yeah, because, I mean, that will say, that's awesome. And they uh, are going with, you know, this game versus a game like King's Quest or something. So maybe Sierra <laughs> said, we'll let you have this one. If it does okay, maybe we'll give you one of the big dogs. You know, I don't know who, doesn't Activision own Sierra's properties? It may want to, if anybody knows who owns their stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure who owns Sierra. But, now. you know, it, this is uh, smart. But I'll tell you why. We just talked about the fact that you can't get box games anymore hardly. There's a, always a big retro craze. You've got if you if someone asks you to license some of their old properties so they could do something like this, you're literally it's no 
there's no possible way you're going to lose money. Mm -hmm. It's not like there was a big clamoring for the gold rush right. property, right? right? It's a win-win for right. everybody. Every, we get a, a cool box with feelies. These guys get to make a buck. And if they do a good job, it looks like that. What from what I'm looking at, it's looking pretty solid. Uh, it looks like it, com it comes with a CD and discs. So, it's, and again, it sounds a little bit like uh, that Defender of the Crown. And Defender of the Crown... Uh, shot uh, the Cinemaware had a good thing going. They shot themselves in the foot and they ate up a lot of their goodwill mm -hmm. because of the way that. They, and I think part of it was because of depleted help and it was a t one man operation. Right. It was tough because Swim was, he was Swim was really hot, really working hard. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if if these guys get their pre orders together, they get it ready to go. They ship it. They build up some goodwill. This could something you could make some easy money down the line just by licensing all these. Because again, this is one I hadn't heard of, but I have heard of. The, uh, a lot of their games, and a lot probably didn't get released on the Amiga, some of their later stuff, mm -hmm. and it would be cool to send it over. Two points of real-time follow-up from the chat. Terror K says that uh, Sierra did get merged into Activision Bam. in 2008. So. And Ricky says that uh, he believes that the rights to Gold Rush have reverted back to their oh, creators. Oh, sweet. Hey, that's so, even better. Yeah, that's more money great. for them. That's yeah. even better. Less money for Activision. Who yeah. Have, they've got plenty of money. That's great so. work. So I really will be watching this with a lot of interest. Yeah. And does yeah. I have a shipping date, Bo? Did they mention when they were going to plan on shipping uh, it? It looks like to be released on December 10th, 2019. Holy smoke, so just in, a, just in two months. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And that comes for us uh, through Indie Retro News. We may have to pick that up, Bo. Yeah. We, may have to, we may have to jump in on that and see how, I mean, because that's not like something we can get into. A couple more uh, stories here, Aaron. Kim Justice is uh, soliciting people who uh, <laughs> are uh, into the, uh, the Amiga scene. She is currently making a documentary about the Amiga and Atari demo scene. She's posted Ooh. on Twitter. She says, hit me up if you got experience and you don't mind being on camera. She's looking for people that are at the Play Black Expo Blackpool, which is going on this weekend. So if you're listening live and plan on going over there tomorrow, you've got uh, scene experience. If you've got a cracking experience, if you are a raver, I know you I'm all those raver. things, yeah. man. I, and I wish I was in Blackpool. That'd be oh, awesome. It would be. It Although, would if be. I was in Europe this weekend, because isn't this the weekend of the big uh, throwdown in Germany? It is, isn't it? It is. Was it Amiga 34? Amiga 34. Man, that was bad timing for... <laughs> yeah, Play Expo Blackpool should have... Because I don't think Play Expo, Roy, really, I don't think Amiga is a big draw there. Well, I mean, it's. I'd say it's 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 a minor draw. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a much larger event than just for the Amiga, for sure. But anyway, if you want to get on uh, the next Kim Justice uh, joint, then uh, make sure you, you find her over at Play Expo Blackpool. I don't know if you've got this in your news about her, what the video she released this week. But it was her hundred favorite Amiga games. Well, did you have a look at this? I saw it come by my feed. I, I haven't got the I haven't yet. got the flip through it yet. I watched I wanna, her Spectrum video on the same yeah, thing though. I want to. I want to. But uh, she always does great stuff. I, I'm, I, I, I love her wrestling stuff too, as I've mentioned. But yeah, that the uh, Spectrum was good, and I just t caught a little bit of the Amiga one. It looks great, you know. Yeah, so I yeah. recommend that as well. And finally, Aaron, the time the the calendar, the pages of the calendar have been ripping off in fast motion, just like they do on TV. <laughs> it's already time for another NOG meetup. As we know, NOG stands for Nespresso Amigo Users Group. They are Norway's greatest and best and first fans of the Amiga. We're number one. Yeah. Retrobit Fix. They've retitled their, I, th I don't know if they've retitled their meeting or their group name, but they, they keep both logos on there just as not to confuse people. But if you want to hang out with a bunch of cool dudes, Figgy's always in the house, Reflection, founder what? of the Norwegian demo scene, uh, Edvin Helland is here. Look at this. Look at these guys. Look at, these all, look all, look at all the facial hair in this yeah, picture. You well, got... if you're living in Norway, you need that to keep you, keep you warm. I'd be ready to go months. over there. Yeah. I'd have to grow some actual hair, though, to make it. Nah, I'd I get with those so. big Russian hats. You know what I'm talking about? They'd welcome you with open arms in, in Norsk, for sure. I don't think I can make it up there, though. I'm not a cold type. Yeah, you yeah. are. You, you prefer the heat. That's true. And that's going to do it, Aaron. That's this week's roundup of Amiga news and community events. We probably should mention, and we sort of touched on it a minute ago, this is going to be a, a huge weekend. Uh, all eyes turn to Germany. I don't know exactly where in Germany the, uh, the event's occurring, uh, but uh, this is the big uh, uh, Amiga 34 where they're going to be, among other things, they're going to be releasing the standalone vampire. Yeah, that's going that to be, has, uh, uh, I'll be interested. I know that Ravi and Dan are over there. I know. And I'm sure some of our Discord buddies, are, I'm sure at least one or two are, are going to pick one of these up if mm. they can. I've heard a lot of people on the Facebook forums and in Discord talk about grabbing one of these things. 
and we it'll be interesting to see how many they've got. I have not. I mean, people more than knowing me, or people that kept their hand on the pulse more, they may know how the numbers of what they're bringing. I don't know how many they're bringing to the thing, uh, but uh, and there's going to be some other stuff debuted there as well. So I mean, this is going to be a a monster event yeah. that uh, uh, I'm anxious to see some some uh, footage from when it goes down. Uh, and hopefully everyone is happy and go lucky and <laughs> hopefully hope no there's no vampire throwdown yeah. <laughs> where they're trying to either get a vampire or stomp a vampire right. depending on their perspective and the whole vampire situation but yeah i'll be interested to see what happens this weekend so it, hey listen uh this is the most uh, uh amiga jack at one of these things probably for quite a while i mean this is a, it's funny how these these user groups are are thriving and their uh, Amiga's getting all kinds of videos made. There's new hardware. I mean, it's a it's a real thriving deal now. It's very bizarre. I mean, it's funny. In the five or so years we've been doing this, there was a little, and then every year it's built up, and now it's just almost like a frenzy of, it of is. activity. It is. It's it makes a it a great... lot easier to do the news, doesn't it? Absolutely. You, we'd have to cover the Defender of the Crown thing every week. or the <laughs> Any week we don't have to talk about the keycaps, keycaps. again. Keycaps. <laughs> It was a good week. Man. We drained those topics dry, didn't we, both? Yeah, man. All right. Let's dive right into our public domain selections for this week, Aaron. It's a it's a pool about, about like that. Big. We're gonna talk about worm trist no. first. <laughs> okay. Let's lead the charge with well, worm trist. You know, I'm gonna give you what I got, Boat. So, <laughs> you know, this is our what, seventy third public domainia. And so we've done almost as many of these as we have pinball specials. Yeah. In fact, I actually just released this show into the public domain when it's all said and <laughs> done. Uh, so let's talk about Worm Triss. Now, Worm Triss has a couple interesting um, firsts for me. All right. This has got to be, if not the first, one of the first games we've ever covered that is not on Lemon. Yeah. <laughs> I it's, was it's the first game I've it. ever seen that this we is, covered that hasn't been this, on Lemon. This is so public domain and rare. Now, I will say it does have a video. I've mm-hmm. found one video, and you're, you're showing well, it. I'm showing it. You're, we're showing it right now. I, as I recall, it had like 50 hits, Yeah, and it's been out for years. <laughs> so it's not a popular uh, watch. Um, this is a game that came out in 1997 uh, on a disc. In fact, it was on... Uh, the uh, Amiga format issue 99B disc from July of 1997. Okay. <clears throat> and there's a reason I know all of that now. Uh, this, uh, again, was a, uh, um, a budget release, or excuse me, a, a public domain shareware, technically. And it was coded by a fellow named Jay Vanderberg, or his cool guy name entity spelled super duper cool guy style with capital letters every once in a while there's a couple numbers thrown oh in. man you know you're cool when you can pull that out look at that yeah yeah uh, and ecs ocs stuff so um what is what is worm Tris? well have you ever heard of a game called tetris yes it is slightly similar to that um it's that Pretty much, except for, so a couple added things. Now, um, I played this game, and I, the first the first go around, you're just like, okay, this is exactly like Tetris, mm-hmm. except for cool. There's a lot of cool guy explosion noises in right. it. Right. Every time you place a piece, it sort of sounds like the Depeche Mode album construction time again. Oh, there you go. Uh, you hate Depeche Mode, don't you, bro? Yes. <clears throat> so, um, as you go forward, you're, if you look to the side of the screen, it's got some of the stuff you expect in a Tetris game. Mm-hmm. You've got your next piece block. Yep. You've got your how many lines you've got going. You've got what level you're on. But then it's got kills and cash. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to try to tell you what this is as best as I can. Okay. Do you know exactly what those lines are? No. Okay. I look forward to your explanation. Uh, I could find no documents on this. And now I did find a place that used to have them, but they're no longer there, and there was no cash for that place. So I couldn't actually read the documents for this, and uh, if they had any. All I know is the file was there. I had a heck of a time running this, to be honest with you. I didn't find it and run it. Um, so occasionally, you will see a couple different things fall down on top of your, instead of, that aren't pieces. And there, one of them is worms. And the other thing, I'm not 100% sure what it's it is. It's a sheep. A sheep. Okay. Because it doesn't really bah or anything. I never heard any sheep noise. No, but it's it's a worm tris, and it's doing the thing that sheep do in worms. Okay. I, that, that makes sense to me now, because it basically explodes. Yeah. Now, another thing you'll notice is that sometimes the pieces come down 
uh, with question marks or like a times number on the top of them. And they, what this means is basically uh, they will they will what it, score more. It's a, it's a bonus, right? Yeah. And so, uh, and that's something. It's something. You know, uh, that's something that it does. Now, what what you could basically do is the when your when your worm drops down, they, they're just one, and the sheep as well. They just basically take up one square, mm-hmm. and so you basically fit them in as pieces, right. effectively. But except they don't go away necessarily when you complete the line. Exactly. You have to basically kill. You kill the, the sheep. Sort of explodes, mm-hmm. but the worm you have to basically you have to crush it. smush. Yeah, yeah, and then and then you get a kill. Mm-hmm. That's where your kill number comes from. Now. The cash number, I didn't get any cash until well into the game, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100%. I think it's a uh, a certain amount of lines you get at once, or sort of. Could you you want to try that? No, one? because I have no idea either. I don't know how the cash the cash falls into it. Yeah, it's very uh, goofy. Now, all that said, it's not a. It's actually a decent little game. I mean, it's it's Tetris. With a couple gimmicks in there, that's the game. I mean, and and I played it for. It's not hard, is it? No. The hardest part was getting it installed. Getting it installed, although it was not. It was the, it was number two compared to the other game. Oh really? Yeah. I had a harder time with this one than Mega Ball. Uh, but yeah, I it was not the easiest thing, I, I, and really I had to kind of hunt it down too. Uh, but I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about this thing. I think the bonus uh, score feature is. It's something. It depends, you know, a lot of people that play Tetris are sort of purists, and you've got all these other kind of wacky versions of Tetris. You got Weltris and also the crazy stuff Hatris. Um, this, but those are radically different than Tetris, sort of. This isn't radically different at all. This is basically Tetris with a couple gimmicks, and the gimmicks aren't. I mean, assuming that nothing else shows up in the later levels that I didn't know about, like the, nothing really blew my mind. What, what did you think about it? Um. This is a, it's a decent Tetris 2 clone. Did you ever play Tetris 2? Um, what was it on? It was on everything. Tetris 2, I don't know, what are the differences, because I don't remember. Okay, well Tetris 2 has bombs in it. In okay, fact, yes. that was their whole advertising campaign, is they said it's Tetris, but it's got bombs Okay, I do, I do, I have played that a lot, I'm not a lot, but I do remember what so bombs. Yeah. it's not a very good game compared to the original Tetris. The bombs do not add much to it. This is this is what this game. This guy played Tetris two, and he's like, "Man, Worms is a game that there's stuff that explodes, and we can put worms in here and add some extra mechanics." This game turned me off from the outset, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. All right, the first thing you see is this big screen that says, "If you don't pay, don't play." <laughs> yeah, and he's asking for was it Dutch Dutch Gelders? Gelders. Okay. What a great name for the currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Gelder. And so, you know, I, you know, I'm sure that the the, the great Jay Vandenberger uh, spent tons of time working on uh, his collection of games, but I, it made me wonder, you know, on what day did the great Vandenberg create Wormtris, and why couldn't he have rested on that day? You're burying this guy, Boat. Um, I, you know, if you put your game out there for public domain, you should not be a jerk. You should be well, like, listen, if you like this game. Why don't you send me some money? Don't be like, if you're not going to pay, don't play. That goes against the whole spirit of what public domain software is. Maybe it was lost in translation. (laughs) It was written in English. I'm trying to stand up for the guy. Listen, it is listed as shareware. There was no shareware. That was a different term. Didn't you listen to all the folks on the Discord? That was an MS-DOS term. They didn't have that on the Amiga. Well, clearly, this is listed as shareware on on Hall of Light, so Mm. they must have had some. But I mean, normally when you play shareware, it doesn't threaten you or badmouth you. <laughs> yeah. As just start. No, but I mean, yeah, I did see that. It did strike me as amusing. It's and that is the first thing you see in big, huge letters. Like so. But anyway, I played it anyway. If I, I didn't have to play this game, I would have turned it off immediately. I'm gonna send the guy some Gelders. Not really. I just wanted to say <laughs> Gelders. But uh, is it Gelders? Did it, I get that right? That was the. Yeah. He's the football announcer, Frank Geller. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, the. Uh, the explosion noises and stuff. What'd you think of those? That right. I thought that's kind of funny. It's it's, it's it's like let's load up the old uh, BBC library of sound effects and then pop something in here. It's the same thing you get on tons of media games. Well, I mean, it's we can sample stuff on here. So that's what they're saying. It, it, yeah. it works. It yeah. works good. Now listen, it it's a it's a very slight Tetris clone. That's all there is to it. But uh, it it's now it, I will say this: it, the the pieces fall like. 
uh, they call it V1 Tetris, or you know the original. There's no infinite spin. There's no there's no Z uh, there's no Z spin. Um, the the pieces they the, when they fall and then they drop and that's where they are. Um, yeah, you know they they do include the you know the piece that's coming up next. There's no hold. Um, there's just so many versions of Tetris out there. Um, you know, in '97, I'm sure that the Amiga scene was was sort of desperate for new titles, and so maybe this guy was trying to capitalize on that. It was on the form, it was on the cover of Amiga format. Um, but uh, but the, you know, if surely there is a better Tetris clone, although maybe this is it, because you know this was better than Choctris. Choctris was truly horrible. We, well, we didn't we try Wellatris? Did no, we, we tried. What I was think, the one we tried on the Amigathon? Didn't we play? We put Wellatris on there. And uh, and it's again. Yeah, that was, that the was one of those version. early morning here, games. Here, like. yeah, yeah. That was grumpy boat time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've played much worse versions of Tetris than this. I mean, it's sure. Per- Listen, if you want to sit down and play a uh, first oh, of all, I'll I, go well, ahead. before you, no, go ahead. I want to take back what I said about Choctaw. Choctaw is a new game. We played another, and I did that on a stream. I think that we played another version of Tetris that was not as good as this one. Well, uh, I don't think. Did we ever play one for as an official episode? I can't I don't remember. Think so. Maybe we just played it on the Mega well, and things. Like I said, this is totally competent as a Tetris. If you don't mind a little bit of goofiness, the and and you're not playing really for points because I mean I don't know how the points work, but if I was a if I was a traditionalist and you're getting random point stuff, that could get weird. Yeah, you might not like that. Um, uh, so it's but it's plain Jane. There's nothing there's nothing astounding that I saw. Again, I didn't play this thing for three hours, so maybe if you get into it for a while. Yeah, it, it, you know the, the 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 bottom line is the new mechanics that that are introduced. They don't improve the core game of Tetris, which by itself is pretty much perfect as it is. It's yeah. hard to improve on perfection. That's know. true. That's true. So I, I I didn't play this a lot. So um, it, full disclosure, I didn't. I just didn't. See I the also need. like the fact that the, the the pieces are nicely colored. They're colored pastel. Um, you know, they're you could easily do this and make all the pieces the same color. Yeah. Well, that's shape. what I'm saying. I mean, it's a competent version of Tetris yeah. with a wacky thing. And the cash, I was wondering if maybe at some point there'd be some kind of store or something. But I mean, no, I never gosh, got the there. Zero percent chance there's an in-game store. And here's the and thing: so the there's only the one video. Now I played further in than the video. All right, I played as long as I could. I think he Nothing played. Changed. Oh gosh, I played. I, I played for a long, long time. Yeah, but the guy in the video gave up because I thought, well, this guy's video, he didn't play it that long. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. So I, I don't. I know you're better at Tetris than I am. So I'm assuming if if there was something special to be seen, you would have seen. Yeah, and I'm, the the thing is the the reason why this is not going to pr- appeal to people that are really serious about Tetris is because it doesn't control it either. It doesn't control accurately enough to reflect the original Tetris, and it doesn't give you any of the quality of life improvements that newer versions of Tetris give you. There you go. However, for a Tetris game on the Amiga, pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. I, I I'm not going to go crazy for it. Yeah, I'd say meh. It's a solid man. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about Mega Ball, Aaron. All right, man. So now this one I actually had played uh, back in the day. So this one I had experience with uh, Mega Ball. Now I I picked Mega Ball Four, which that seems to be because that's the last version that yeah. was released. And, and I did play the AGA version. The, I think it's with only all the AGA. The, the, all the cool colors and everything. The colors, children. Uh, three discs, boat, and I know that for a fact because I had to install this on the hard drive. Oh, yeah. Well, that was I didn't like to do that. No, <laughs> you know. Why uh, didn't you go with the WHD? I, I couldn't get anything to work right, mm. so I just I installed it. It's on my hard drive now. I got that. Uh, this has two player support, but it's hot seat. That was kind of disappointing. I was hoping it'd have simultaneous, so I tried it. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, this was done by the Mackie boys, Ed and Al Mackie. Ed did the coding, and Al did the music and graphics. Uh, there are multiple versions of this game, ranging from version 4 all the way down to the original version, and there is a flavor for all the chipsets, so you can you can play this with uh, your old Amiga. I'm pretty sure the, the AGA version, I'm pretty sure you can play it on non-AGA machines, just I don't know if it's a separate version. I, I didn't try it, so okay. I, I used my 1200. Um, so, what is Mega Ball? Well, you ever heard of a game called Arkanoid Boat? I have. You ever heard of a game called Breakout, yes. Super Breakout, uh, or any no, many of its games? This is basically like Super Duper Arkanoid uh, uh, 2000. Uh, you are a paddle. You whack a ball up in the air, 
and you try to blow up all the weird shapes and colors that you see up there. And occasionally when you blow one up, a wacky power up or power down will come down at you that you want to grab or not grab accordingly. Right. I mean, this is they did not reinvent the wheel here. Much like the last game, uh, they said, hey, Arkanoid's fun. How about let's do that? And they did it. Um, you've got a uh, slew. I mean, what, what makes these games fun? It's the weird power up. Right. And there's so many, I had to actually print a little picture here mm -hmm. and I, so I could tell you what some of them are. I thought that was, by the way, we should mention that's an, it's a nice touch at the beginning of the game on the title screen. They give you the power-ups <laughs> and what they do. Right. Um, so what you get here, just when you, here are your various power-ups. You've got slow ball. You've got the uh, uh, lasers, my personal favorite. I think everybody likes the lasers. You've got the gimmick where you can catch the ball and hold it. Uh, you've got a, a gimmick that gives you an extra life. You've got a deal that it make your paddle larger. Uh, you also got a thing that makes it go through bricks easier. Uh, you've also got the bad stuff, stuff that makes your paddle smaller, uh, st stuff that makes you basically instantly die. Mm -hmm. Just an instant death. And those, I've noticed those instant death ones are a lot all over the place. They drop fairly frequently. There's also one that will, if you get it, it blows up all the gold bricks on the screen, which that's pretty handy. So there, there's quite a few of these. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, like 12, 13, 12, 14 of these things. There's a lot of them. Uh, and by the way, the little screen is helpful, but good luck memorizing those. <laughs> you just have to play it about a million times. Yeah, right? well, I mean, not a million times, but if you play it a couple times, you'll learn. <clears throat> now, um, there are 20 uh, unique tunes in here. Uh, I say unique as they are different. Uh, I they are they vary in quality. I don't think no, any of them were none of them were might were brutally offensive. No, but they were okay. You know what it reminded me of was the tunes in Lemmings. Mm -hmm. None of them are going to blow your mind, but their tunes they're in there and anytime, they're and they're okay. Anytime that there's background music in a Mia game, I get out of my chair and I do a little dance. You got to have background music for a game like this. You've got you got to. Gots to. Um, now. With all the uh, all that out of the way, what did you think of this game, uh, and uh, how do you rate it amongst your favorite? Do you like these sorts of games, by the way? Well, I think just like uh, this is this is very unlike Wormtris, in that Wormtris didn't really, in my opinion, didn't do much to improve on the overall fun factor of the game that it was inspired by. This game is probably my favorite breakout clone ever. This game is great. Uh, the power-ups are graphical. They're not just they're not letters that fall down. The stage shapes are interesting. I like the fact that there are like sort of like smart bombs that destroy a particular kind of brick. Uh, I thought the music was good. Uh, I like the fact that there's a billion boards. Um, everything about this was fantastic. Everything, everything. Hmm. So. Uh, I thought this game was great. I will be playing it more. Uh, I like breakout Arkanoid style games anyway. I thought that the mouse control felt just right. It didn't feel too loosey goosey. It didn't feel like it was too sensitive. Um, everything about this, I really, really enjoyed. I do think, as uh, some people mentioned on the Discord, I think we'll talk about it on the reviews, uh, this should not have been an AGA release. I mean, they could have easily done this on OCSCS. Well, they did. They released it on everything. <clears throat> so Wait a minute. Did that actually do anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're recording. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on some of the things you okay. said here. Um, I didn't. I, you know, it's funny. I played this game back today. I remember like it. I was kind of excited to play it again. And when, the more I played it, the less I enjoyed really? it. Really? The one of the main problems this game has is is the setup of the screen. Uh, he has the blocks right down on top of you, and those first few launches the ball. I mean, it's insta death yeah, over and that over. Is true. Uh, if you play a game like let's let's think about Arkanoid and Arkanoid Revenge of Doe, which are mm -hmm. the two. You know, those are the games that people cite as being sure. the big players, yeah. right? Those were vertical games, which means the monitor was turned on its side. So you had a lot of real estate there for the ball to travel. Yeah. You could line these shots up. 
This game, you have practical. There are some of the levels you are literally boxed in from above, and you can it, barely move. It does turn it into more of a strategy game where the first you can't just you can't just let the ball fly. You have to study the stage, figure out where can I go to make some room, and then go from there. Yeah, and it's just it that I didn't like that aspect. Mm-hmm. I, I prefer having some distance. It also adversely affects your, the drop down goodies. Because number one, you don't have that much time to get to them, and uh, they have the the death goodies sprinkled in there too much. That death goodie come down a lot, it does. and a lot of times you you're boned. You can't avoid it because it's coming down where the ball is at, or you've mm-hmm. got to go through where it's at, and mm-hmm. you just and you just eat it. And yeah. so I found the game too difficult to be honest with you. That was a that was a that was a real pain for me. I mean, I do like some of the pictures he comes up with with the blocks. I think they're pretty clever. Uh, uh, I think the a lot of the things he has coming out of them, the goodies are pretty good. You know, there's plenty of them to choose from. So there's a lot of it uh, that I like, but there for me, it's just the it's the overall makeup of the structure of the game that I just think is flawed. And so that meant it took away from my enjoyment of everything else, mm-hmm. and and that made me not like it that much. I mean, if I'm going to play a game like this, I need more space. And and that, how do you accomplish that when you don't have a vertical monitor? You just have to use either you have to make the bricks smaller, or you have to make the uh, the pictures less amazing, and and you have to give give your player a little distance. You know. Yeah, I mean, this is accomplished on almost all versions of Arkanoid by just artificially making the screen vertical and decreasing right. the size of everything. Right, and and so when you have this Amiga version where you you can and you can do that because we've seen it done mm-hmm. on here with just with the scoreboards off to the side right. or whatever. That's how I would have went. Now, they chose to go this way, and I think the reason they did was because they wanted to have these beautiful, multicolored structures that were awesome looking. And I will say, once you get enough bricks out of your way to where it's not insta-death, there's some fun to be had, but still, the ball, and when the ball really gets cooking, it's so fast, it's really difficult. I had, I struggled to get far. It's got a continue feature, which I used uh, a lot. Uh, but to, to me, it, that was an aspect that I just couldn't get over. I just, it was just too close to the bottom. For it me. would have been nice if this game would have had a Sailor Man esque option screen where you could turn off and on some of the uh, items, or really like Breakout or Dyna Blaster or whatever that PD clone that was, where you have basically infinite options to turn on or off any of the items, any of the drops. You play with no drops if you want. That would add uh, some replayability, and also, like you said, it, you would get rid of those those insta death things. I will say the Mackies did include something very good, and, and I read that this was a, an option that was, at first, it was only for people that had bought the license, but eventually, with the for the fourth release, they just made it part of the overall free release, and that's a level editor. Mm. So you could actually go in here, which I admittedly I did not try the level editor. It's, I'm not necessarily good at that sort of thing, but. I guess if you don't like these close-up puzzles, you could go in there and make everything set higher on the screen. So, But I would kind of like to have seen that done uh, beforehand. Also, I'm pretty sure you can go through here and screw around with the music if you want to change the music. Well, if, even if you did that, it would make the game way too easy. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if it... Uh, because if you put everything up at the top of the screen and leave the size of your paddle the way it is, you'll catch the ball. Well, yeah. I, well, it would be easier. And it, the, when the ball gets going pretty quick, it can get... I thought it got pretty difficult. Oh, well, yeah, but that's Arkanoid. I mean, that yeah, but uh, you've got more space to make it to where the ball's coming is, is, my, is the difference. I will say the mouse is a controller. Of course, this is a duh sort of thing, but like it's a, it's it works well. Yeah. I, to tell you the truth, even though I'm a huge fan of Arkanoid, yeah. I really don't like controlling it with the spinner. I'd much rather control it with a mouse. Oh, I'd rather have the spinner. The spinner's awesome. But if you have but you have to get one. One of the downfalls of Arkanoid in the arcade and Revenge of is the fact that the, a lot those spinners often weren't in real good shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if you've got to get one, I mean if you ever played the the, the when I think of the game that had the all time finest spinner it would be tempest mm-hmm. and when you found one that had a, the properly aligned properly tuned up spinner you could spin that thing and it would spin like a motor yeah. you know and, yeah. and that's what you need uh you need something that's well kept i know it's a lot of t- machines i play in the arcade i don't know have, have you ever have you played a lot of uh Arkanoid or paddle games? Yeah, in the I, arcade? I almost bought an Arkanoid when I bought the Mario Brothers. That would be a good choice. I mean, because yeah. you can. I mean, if you don't get bored with those, there's mm-hmm. a it's sort of infinite replay. Right. I just I chose to get the Mario Brothers instead, but uh, but yeah, it, I I I would like to have one of those machines, and I I would probably get used to the spinner fairly quickly. Yeah. Now, oh, I, I'll mention this in a second, but I should mention that this this was listed as having a uh, a compilation called the Mega Ball Deluxe CD. 
Okay. Yeah, this Did was you on see the CD32. Now, the, I looked to see what was included on this CD, and so from what I could tell, Mega Ball 4. That's it. That's so the it. compilation is this one game. I think I'm thinking of something different. I don't think this got a CD32 release. Wait, I don't I, think it, there was it's any a deluxe CD on. release. It probably, if it was on CD, it probably would have worked on, the, on yeah. the... But, I mean, I couldn't find a picture of this. I couldn't find anyone that owned it, so it could be uh, who knows what. Um, believe it or not... I found. I should mention this for for uh, the other game as well. I found both these games on eBay. Believe it Did or not, you? yes. Well, unbelievable. It's it, they're on eBay with a butt. Uh, so, uh, Wormtress. Uh, if you need, if you want to own Wormtress, uh, you can go to eBay and for and uh, buy the Amiga format disc 99B from the July 1997 uh, cover of Amiga format. Uh, right now, you can buy it for four dollars and eighty cents. U.S. So you can go get this now. There's a fella, an American fellow, who is selling Mega Ball on eBay right now. Now, before you get your checkbook out, all right, it's he wants thirty nine dollars. The disc had the disc is a copied disc, and I say disc because it's only got one disc, <laughs> and he hasn't checked it, but he's pretty sure it works. And right now, thirty nine dollars takes it to the house. So wow. if you want, if you want, what you want a bargain. To, if you want to gamble, <laughs> I just thought of all the games that would be listed. These and these are both both listed on eBay. Wow. Um, there were there was uh, reviews of Mega Ball, uh, and it was the Lemon review. Uh, Lemon gives this seven point five seven votes. Really, not too bad. We did have some thoughts from our illustrious Discord community. Uh, this week we had quite a few reviews. Uh, we're going to start things off with um, Graham W. Bebke. Of course, the master of reviews. His Wormtress review says, Yay, another Tetris clone. <laughs> Tries to change the formula <laughs> and fails. Perhaps I'm a Tetris snob and spo spoilt by Tetris DX, but I'll never play this again. Tetris DX, the ultimate Tetris game. Mm. Um, Mega Ball AGA review from Graham. Yay, another breakout clone. Also tries to change the formula, and while I enjoy the Arkanoid series of breakout clones the most, this is a decent breakout clone on the Amiga for me. Music was okay, but got annoying after a while, but I would play this PD title again. Six out of ten. Yep. Chris Fold says, Wormtris is an abomination of a Tetris clone. Competes only with Top Banana for the worst Amiga wow. game. One out of ten. Fold does not play any punches. No. Mega Ball, he says, terrible sound effects, average controls. It's why AGA only is beyond me, and it looks like it was made for the Tatung Einstein. Oh, man. An acceptable breakout clone for an 8-bit machine, but not AGA hyped. The floppy disk it came on would contribute more karma of the earth by being used as a coaster. Four out of ten. Three coasters. Three coasters. Big ECTZ writes, in hindsight, this may not be a classic Amiga title, but for me it holds a huge place in my heart. Mega Ball is probably the first casual gaming experience I had because this was my go-to when I was tired of playing more complex games and something I could play in between rendering graphics or making music. Arkanoid was the other breakout clone I played, but it cannot compare to Mega Ball AGA. It had great mechanics, fun levels, colorful graphics, and good music. I can't really think of anything that could improve it. I could even launch it from Workbench and go right back to what I was doing without a reboot. Not a classic, but still a solid game. 7 out of 10. And finally, Pac Billy writes, Mega Ball AGA was my go to breakout clone on my 1200 and 4000 back in the day. I was a sucker for anything AGA in those days, so why it needed to be AGA is beyond me. Awesomeness. While not up to the standard of Arkanoid 2 on the C64, it was a fun diversion when I had a hankering to move my mouse to the left and right, clicking occasionally. <laughs> 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 All right, so we thank our Discord community, as always, for providing those reviews. A deep sigh. A deep sigh. That was it. You had to as a palate cleanser. Yeah. Those were two, let's say, middle-of-the-road PD titles. Yeah. I would call them both middle-of-the-road. Not terrible, but not... They're no Hangar 18. I'll you're, not you gonna, you're not going to go full folds on them? Just... No. I, I won't go full folds. <laughs> All right, Aaron, you want to give everybody a little peek at what's been going on on our uh, Amigos Retro Gaming YouTube channel this week? Sure, yeah. Let's, ha let's have a look, Boatster. Um, <clears throat> so let's, have a, let's start at the beginning here, Boat. Now, we recorded last week, 
And then immediately, it was time for the big recording vote. And that yeah. was, an, and by big, I mean the, the small, the least attended Taze Valley Computer Club meeting of all the times. But we had a good time. It was Taze Valley Computer Club night uh, last Saturday. And we broadcast four and one half hours of, of us screwing around and playing games. That was, and occasionally stopping to eat pizza. It was a glorious night. It was glorious, actually. We, we played, gosh, we must have played two and a half hours with Coco. Mm -hmm. And we played, uh, uh, we tried, bit. we attempted to play some C64, mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with Boat's tape drive is, is tapioca. And then we started the night off with some Atari 8-bit. Uh, action. We had a good time. Yeah. Uh, we got nothing accomplished from a from in terms of computer repair, but we had a good time playing games. So if you want to see me, the Brent, Terry, and the boat sit around here, eat pizza, and play games for four and a half hours, there you go. I was thinking about it. Uh, you know, we did we did about uh, uh, with with the Coco show last week. We did how many? It was about three hours. Uh, Friday, mm -hmm. four and a half hours Saturday, and I was in for another hour and a half on Sunday. So I, I had a lot of on-screen time. Yeah, man. No one needs to see me for that long. Yeah, in they these do. Circumstances. Just, um, but we uh, we do uh, the Taze Valley Classic Computer Club every uh, Saturday, the first Saturday of the month, uh, every month. So first Saturday of November, we'll be back at it. Uh, Aaron is going to bring some of his projects. John Marshall, I'm sure, will be back with us. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, hopefully he'll be able to he get off He got screwed work. this yeah. time, yeah. The Chud, Matt. Hopefully we'll have a bigger crew around next time. Yeah, the Chud, the Chud is convalescing. I talked to him last night. Uh, and uh, good luck, Chad, on your recovery. Yeah, yeah. All right. What else went on, Aaron? Uh, uh, did we talk about Dunk's video from last week, the Pinball Dreams video? If we didn't, let's talk about it now because it's become it's become quite a popular release and it's super super glorious video. The Dunk has done it again, and he has got a comparison video up here for the new release of the Amstrad uh, Pinball Dreams done by the Batman uh, the group. Batman team, the yeah. Batman group and the Batman group have went bananas. Uh, this is particularly golden for me because uh, it's funny how things go, Boatster. Uh, uh, we spun the wheel. We made the on ARG last week, and uh, it was chat choice. And mm -hmm. what did the chat want to see? They wanted to see g uh, games from the Amstrad. So I actually chose this as my game this week, just so I could sit down and play a lot. Uh, I'm not going to give my full view here, but let's just say it was happening. Uh, but the the Amstrad has really got a real winner here, and uh, uh, this is a great video. He did a great job, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's amazing the power of the CPC. I, you know, I don't know anything about the CPC, but f from the screenshots and the videos that I've seen of other games, very few look this good. This is another case of having the hardware in the hands of the right programmers. It's a very impressive release that compares favorably with the Amiga version. And I'll also say that uh, from what I heard, they said that the uh, the big limitation on the uh, CPC version was the memory. They said, really, this was only using about 50% of the processing power that the, that the Amstrad has to offer. Wow. So I don't think the Amstrad was ever fully... It was a port machine, yeah, and it, that was not to its best interest. No, that's for sure. No. But anyway, this is a, a really good video. So check out the Dunks offering; it's very good stuff. Um, we might as well talk about last week's ARG since I mentioned it. ARG presents last week. We did games on Steam, yeah, boat, and uh, and that was, of course, that's Brent's baby, and so we had to own the games. So it was an easy choice for me. I'm an Amiga guy, you know that, and so I had to pick. I've been wanting to talk about it for a while too. Wings Remastered was my game, and we went in uh, went in on that. I love this game. I bought it pretty soon after it came out, mm -hmm. and uh, man, what a great job! This is what I want for my remastered games. I wanted to take a great game, you can modernize it, make it more fun to play, make it easier, but don't monkey with it, you know. And that's what they did in this. They didn't monkey with it in any way. A beautiful, playable game. That takes everything I love from Cineware Classic and brings it forward to when this was released. I believe it was around 2013. Uh, <clears throat> Brent's game, which I'm trying to think of, what was the name? Slay, Slay the, the Spire. Spire. A card offering. Uh, uh, I think it came out what about two, three years ago, mm -hmm. Boat. I didn't. Re I don't. You know, I don't pay attention to this stuff. But apparently, this game was quite a happening when it came out, and I guess it's still pretty popular. Uh, and you know, uh, I'm not a big card guy, uh, Boat. And I sat down and played, and I played the crap out of this, and it, it's really quite good. Yeah. I was surprised. They took a, a, a something I'm not real fond of and made it pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It's it's easy to get into, 
And so uh, this was a good week of ARG games. I actually mm. left a review for probably oh, the first time ever on I ARG because I, I played quite a bit of Slay the Spire. I couldn't believe that uh, you that your name popped up there. We skipped right over that. I don't read that crap. <laughs> so yeah, ARG this week, was we had a good time. Uh, I guess we should mention since we taped it after we did Amigos, it was the, the debut episode of the Coco Show, yeah. which was last... Uh, we did it live last Friday, and I guess you released it, what was it, Tuesday mm-hmm. when it came out? Boy, we had a good time uh, with this, didn't we both? Yeah, we did. Uh, we looked at a couple of Coco games, uh, and we looked at Poltergeist, based on the film from mm-hmm. 1982, uh, which was a game that I played back when I was a kid, and one of the first Coco games I ever played, to be honest with you. And then we also had a look at The Sailor Man, which is a Popeye clone that uh, the Coco did better than, I think, pretty much any other home console or computer. It killed it. You could say that maybe the, the NES version's uh, right there at the top of the heat, but this has got to be at least a, a close second. Especially for including all the levels and... And, and, and bonus and, stuff. Yeah, and bonus stuff, too. And uh, uh, we had a lot of fun playing these. And, ha- and so the Coco Show, again, we're going to be filming these things every month. Uh, we'll come out with another one, and uh, uh, we will have our, uh, our selection committee pick us games. They've already got us a couple lined up for next time out. And we've had a, we had a lot of fun. I've been spending a lot of time uh, nosed around the, in the uh, Coco community. Super nice people, and they're super helpful and super supportive. So that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Um, I believe that that is all of our updates. Did I miss one? Uh, yeah, you. Oh, I did. Your yeah. Sailor Man video. Yeah, Aaron. well, speaking of Sailor Man, I did. A, I did like a, a playthrough of it. Look at how beautiful I am. You're a beautiful man. I'm a gorgeous individual. Uh, I played Sailor Man all the way through a couple times, and then I went through and. Uh, got in the menus and changed some of the difficulty. This game really, the uh, uh, the fellow that did it did an excellent job in including all the little tidbits from the arcade that you and you wouldn't know it if you didn't increase the level difficulty uh, or just get real far in it. And so I went through and tinkered with those, and then even went and played some of the invisible levels. Mm-hmm. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I had a real good time playing that. So we've had a lot of Popeye the last few weeks. That's for darn sure. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Uh, boat. Uh, should we mention? Um, I say I think is that catch everything? I think that's pretty much it, Boats. I think that's everything. I do want to mention that oh, Amigos and uh, our Sinclair and the Coco Show are all uh, hosted at Anchor.fm. Uh, if you have had trouble getting our Sinclair uh, this past week, if you didn't get the Chucky Egg episode, uh, go ahead and uh, and go to Anchor.fm slash our Sinclair and the new RSS is there. Uh, with Amigos, you shouldn't have had any problems. It shouldn't have, yeah, it might just be something as easy as unsubscribing and resubscribing. Some people even said that their podcasts are updated automatically. So uh, I, I tried to make that as seamless as possible. What Anchor FM does is it allows us to put all of our episodes on the feed. We were limited to about a hundred or so on the old uh, feed burner feed. Uh, so now, uh, if you would like, you can scroll through all 218 previous episodes of Amigos plus all our episodes of Insert Disc Two. Uh, they're all at your fingertips now. Beautiful. Well done, Boat. Yeah. You're, you're a machine, sir. Aaron, <clears throat> I want to thank one more person. You're welcome, man. I also want to thank Gary Heather for contributing to uh, the send boat back to Amiga Ireland. Uh, I agree with that sentiment. <laughs> send it back. Uh, uh, GoFundMe. Uh, thank you, Gary, for uh, for contributing. It's quite generous of you. Like I said, I, I for all of those people that, that can't make it to Amiga Ireland, I hope to give you all a, a front row seat through streaming the event and interviews and lots of other fun stuff. So You've got to fully slate it out this year. I do. It's going to be a professional gimmick, isn't it? Well, let's not go that far. No, it's going to be this. It's <laughs> seamless, not a problem one. Um, last week's Patreon song, mm-hmm. Aaron, I had to, uh, this was this was p- quite possibly the 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 least amount of action we've ever gotten on on the Patreon. It was barely song. a song. It was more like a series of spastic noises. I um I had to solicit people. I had to make them feel bad about themselves for not guessing the the uh, the song. Pack Billy came to the rescue. Pac, so you you pestered Pack Billy until he, until he said, "Here's the song." That's right. Learn. Uh, the song last week was Octopus's Garden. By that the was I, I love that song, and let me tell you, that was not that. <laughs> what have you ever heard that song? Was it sung by an octopus? Well, it's funny you mention that because Pac Billy writes. Uh, in addition to his correct guess, he says, 
Oh man, I was just sitting here humming it to myself over and over into the, in the dark until it hit me like a ton of bricks. This was a case where you're squeezing in the extra syllables of everyone's name really threw off the meter and made it tricky. Yeah, no kidding. You know what scares me is Pac Billy sitting somewhere in a fevered state in the dark in like a fetal position and all he's doing is humming your and he's humming your song that's S seek assistance pack billy um he he said did you do this in honor of the new abbey road mixes that were just released no i had no idea there were we have no abbey affiliation with the beatles yeah. uh have you listened yet he said listening to the itunes previews i feel like they castrated the drums on a few tracks Ooh. Um, Typical. Yeah. Ringo never gets any love, boat. Well, it's funny. He says, uh, "I can't <laughs> believe boat. I can't believe no one else has gotten it yet." This is the Bloody Beatles. Though to be fair, the Ringo songs aren't as timeless. That cuts like a knife. I disagree, to you. my friend. He says, "My favorite Ringo song is actually Good Night off the White Album." Though to be fair, it's really a John song that Ringo sings, and the George Martin arrangement of the re is the reason I love it so much. Wow, a true fan. Yeah. And you've blighted that album for him. Thank you, boat. I, I tend to think that I've taken it to a higher level. I wouldn't think that. An astral plane. I agree with part of that word. <laughs> Aaron, we have a new supporter this week. We want to bring Terry Howard on board. Terry the, Howard. Uh, Amigos supporter train. Some, some, some chick. She's the only girl that comes to ARG every yeah, week. That's true. That's <laughs> true. She's the only uh, female present at our uh, computer club meetings. Although Eep did come downstairs for a little bit last time, so she got the heck out of here. And she did. <laughs> she had she had things to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, this week, Aaron, uh, I'm taking a respite from the Patreon song for both our sake and for the. You got hurt sake. last week when no one guessed your tune. I got a it, hurt. it mentally tortured you. It was. It was. It, was, it got in my head. It got in my head, you know. Um, Are you going to sing this like rap style? So, or no, something? what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the names and I'm going to read them in reverse order because a lot of times I feel like that I hurry through the last couple names to finish a phrase. Yeah. This time I'm going to read them uh, in reverse order. You should read them completely reverse with the last name first and everything. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Barman Kjolbjorn. Don at Pixels. This is going to be a fun game. Warns Jason. Coles Darren, Barracuda Brutal, Bingston Daniel, Humbertstad Tom Kim, E. I might have messed that up. Somewhere. Yep. <laughs> Keep going. Nelson Eric. Kind of like Nelson Riddle. <laughs> THT. That one's a palindrome. Ronus Julo, Bradley Adam, Nan Josh, Crypt the From Tapes, Styles Duncan. Harrington Man Boss Paul Jones Brian Man C. Boss. I like that. <laughs> Harry Oh, I, I can do the spoonerism too. Harry Gucker. Vintage. Harry Gucker. <laughs> and Retro O'Briens. You wouldn't think this would be difficult, but it's a little challenging. Battersby Adam, Denson Lane, Vebke W. Graham, Giroux <coughs> Laurent, Dreamcatcher, Folds Chris, Abbott Ravi. Saul Christopher, 75 Blindo, he Helen Edvind, Mortensen Sogard Stefan, Norris Slow the, <laughs> CTZ Figgy, Boy Dead Creepy, DeRocher Ricky, Perone Matthew, Marshall John, Lord Level, Cote Check, Kebab Allen, Keelon Leaf, Cook John, Zombie the Joe. Cook <laughs> John. Poor guy. Monks Andrew. Burke Roland. Bitbark. 419 <laughs> Colin. Lomax Darren. Johnzo. Craig Andy. Laramore Matthew. Nibs Howard. O'Hara Rob. Edder Kyle. Harrison Joseph. Rose Simon. Drew Tim. Caveman Retro. Quinn Bernard. <laughs> Caveman Retro. That sounds great. Sheep Virtual Counting. <laughs> Cast Retro Amiga Minute 10. Oh, fancy. McClellan Craig, Lobsterminator, Jones Andy, Armstrong Cameron, Pickford David, Fox Kate, Lunch Free, Harry Gather, Threepwood Deckard, W Mike, Caffeine and Kilobytes, Crispy Cap'n, Letch <laughs> Simon, Reflection, Howard Terry. <laughs> Crispy Cap'n. <laughs> See, that was glorious. It was. You should give me more ideas. Okay. More often. Next week, read them while you're on your stand on your head. Mm, we'll see. We'll while drinking water. That would be... Isn't that like a ventriloquist bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll drink water and kind of... 
you know, I don't want, I don't want, any, I don't want any part of that. Whatever that now, is, yeah. <laughs> Into a weird area there. Next week, Aaron, it's the end of the world. It's no more public domain. Come, we're, public domain, you two in a row. We're playing Armageddon. Oh yes. Hey, I own this game. Ooh. Oh. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. I one. bought this at the store. Mm. How about that? Was this in Canal City? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it yeah. was actually. You it was. reminisce about that a little bit too. All right. Uh, we also want to thank all the fine folks here with us in um, the chat. We got Curtis Boyle, William Becker, Trey Guard, nineteen eighty two Pixels at Dawn, Free Lunch, Retro Man Cave, who is live at Blackpool right now. Oh man. Uh, Jason Plevin, um, Picard two thousand five, Neil from Indie Retro Games, Indie Retro News. Sorry. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us live. We record the show live almost every Friday around 5.30 Eastern. Feel you, free to join us. You might as well mention it. We're not going to be recording for the next two Fridays. Oh, yeah, you're right. Next next two Fridays, we are going to be recording on Sunday instead. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, Probably so around, what, 1 p.m. This Eastern will standing? actually be better for most of you in Europe um, because yeah. it'll be earlier on. Uh, I have some friends coming in uh, next Friday from Germany. And uh, he's gonna be going to work, yeah. And uh, the weekend after that, I will be uh, with my band students again at a, at a high school football game. Oh, oh man, it's gonna be super exciting. That's gonna be that's when you need them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, um, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Until then, adios. adios.